Hey, how's it going? Welcome back. That was a little early. Welcome back, you out there. You, you. Uh, this is Amy, and welcome to Book Talk Tuesday. Yes, we made it to Tuesday, and if you're new, welcome to. That's when I was supposed to do that. Did a little early. Anyway, feeling crazy today. I've already had my second cup of coffee. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, Mike was working. Um, today, today is a ginormous book haul for me. Um, maybe somebody else would be like, that ain't ginormous. Okay. Okay. It's big. It's a big book haul for me. Went to the, this is for October, the book hauls from October, which I went to a library sale and then I went to Goodwill and I did get one book at, um, Sam's Club. Glasses are fogging up. And, uh... Yeah, got a couple of Christmassy uh, stories, uh, which will be fun. Got my cup of joe, my cup of cheer. That's the um, holiday blend by Starbucks. Not paid. This is not a paid uh, advertisement. We're just showing off that we have coffee. And I actually drink it. Um, normally I just have one cup a day, but, um, today's a two cupper. I got, I woke up earlier than usual and yeah, we just need it. We need it. Here, sticking up a little. It's supposed to, but it looks kind of, it looks kind of weird here. So we're just gonna leave it alone. It's a crazy day. We're having tacos today. It's taco Tuesday. Hope you're having your tacos or... Even anything interesting for lunch would be nice. Um, your nose itches. My nose always itches. Okay. I did the pre-show. This is We're acting like this is the pre-show. It's not. Okay. Okay. We're ready for book talk. And we're going to do the weather update. Weather update. Weather update. Uh, it's not going to be that fancy or long because... Um, the weather is consistently, consistently cool. Now, thank you. Um, this is where we need glasses. And that is, um, I don't need that open. But currently, right now, I'm filming this early. Or, I mean, this is early. Early is 8.36, it says, a.m. I don't know what I'm doing up. Probably take a nap later, which is... Yeah, I already made a big batch of salsa. So uh, we had some, uh, my sister gave us some uh, some stuff that was already cut up and diced up to make a big batch of salsa. And uh, it had everything. It had the onions, the cilantro, uh, the tomatoes, the jalapenos. And then I just added some uh, like liquid and a little bit of salt and some, you know watery things so it would make have more liquid but uh yeah show a picture of that probably on thursday and no i didn't get to making a little video for halloween um i might pop some pictures up here later at the end of my halloween or a video i don't know um just got too much things going on in my mind but we're here right now for the weather update and that is 51 degrees and sunny this is really nice it's going to be 73 degrees and a low of 50 today. And then tomorrow is supposed to be, we're get, supposed to be getting, um, um, a weather alert for, uh, uh, wind. I believe it is high winds. So tomorrow it shows high winds of 73, but by the, uh, see the end of the week, um, Saturday is supposed to be 68. Um, and then it looks like Sunday at night, there might be some rain at six, uh, and then Monday, um, this next Monday, it's supposed to be 63 with some rain in the morning. So we're consistently in the low 70s to high, mid, low 60s. I think one day coming up, I want to say it was a 14th. I think it said, here it goes, 59 degrees. Nope, Monday the 18th, it says rain in the daytime and it's 59 degrees a high. That'll be nice. <sighs> yeah. Cool weather. Cool weather is amongst us. 
and moving through our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okie dokie. So that's the weather update. Uh, I hope you're, uh, I know there's tornadoes in uh, um, Oklahoma really bad. Uh, gosh, oh, people are safe and surviving out there and doing okay and everything's going to be okay today. I'm just saying it's election day. That's as political as I'm getting today. And now, and now, what we're gathered here today for is a book haul. Yes. Yes. Books. We're here. We're here for books, people. A lot of books. Big books, little books, chunky books, thin books, short books, tall books, uh, <laughs> old books, new books, um, Dr. Seuss, Rhymicles. But yeah. Books, 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 books. Okay. Okay. Enough. 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 So let's, let's get on the, let's get on the train here. Um, the wagon, the whatever, the, the go-karts. Um, so the, I got, so I got one book. I think I told you this one book. If I didn't, I weren't saying it again. Um, at Sam's club, I got, uh, 12 books at Goodwill and 16 books at the library sale. And we did go, I took my dad this time, um, the library sale we just had this past weekend. Um, I think that's the last one for the year. Um, cause I don't know if they're doing, the library's doing a sale in December, maybe because of the holidays they're not. But, um, anyway, if they don't, we'll be back in, uh, January to the library sale. Uh, I got, I got quite a few books. Um, so yeah, so the first one is uh, a book from Sam's Club I got. It's called The Christmas Tree Farm, The Magic Starts Here by Lori Gilmore. And I know I wanted to get it uh, this year, but I didn't get it. So maybe next year I'll get it. But she's the author of The Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Um, yeah, I still have my sticker on it. I know a lot of people hate those stickers on their books, but honestly, I don't care. I, I, um... I leave them on. Um, and when I get the Goodwill books, the stickers that come from good, I leave them on partly. It reminds me where I got it. Um, and then I know the price I paid for it. So yeah, it doesn't bother me. Um, this, so this is a new book I got at Sam's club. It's a, a Christmas one and I wasn't sure what it was about, but I knew it was this Lori Gilmore had written the pumpkin spice cafe. And there's another one. Um, so when I went to get this one, I thought, oh, maybe I'll get the pumpkin spice cafe one if they still have one left at Sam's club. They didn't. And there was another book. She, I think she wrote after that. It was the, um, the cinnamon bun bookstore. And I thought when I got, this was there, at, that was there at Sam's club when I got this one. And I thought, you know what? I should probably get this, the bookstore one. That would, that would be fun. And I didn't. And so now I'm regretting it, but there's always next year. So this is, I guess it's set in a, um, has its own little universe, I guess, from what I understand. But since this was a Christmas one, I've been looking for some little, uh, some Christmas, um, stories for this year to collect. So, uh, kind of want to do it December, just, um, a bunch of Christmas stories. Um, so anyway, so this one, I didn't know anything what it was about. It does have a little map in here of, oh yeah, it's Dream Harbor. Dream Harbor is the town, I guess. It has a little map. So I'm going to assume that maybe the other books did that too. That's the um, town, Small Town Romance, um, Dream Harbor series. Quirky, it's filled with quirky townsfolk, cozy settings, and swoon-worthy romance. Okay. And so, yeah, she had the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. And um, this is the number three in the series. Uh, oh, it has, uh, this is interesting. It has a playlist, so I guess you can listen to the music along with this. It has a, she has written a playlist um, there. I don't know if you can see them all, but that's cool. Uh, yeah, like Christmas Tree Farm, Taylor Swift, 
oh, linger. The cranberries. I love the cranberries. Um, yeah, Dolores just passed away this recently, the lead singer of Cranberries. And there's Taylor Swift, there's Ariana Grande, there's Taylor Swift, and Harry Styles, and some other people. Yeah, so this one got me right away when I looked at the back of it. It says, Kira North Hates Christmas. I thought, don't need to read any further. This is going to be a good Christmas book. Um, if it's supposed to be a romance, she hates Christmas. It's going to be a love-hate, I think. Um, it says, which is unfortunate since he's just bought a Christmas tree farm in a town that's too cute for its own good. Hmm. And then it says, Bennett Ellis is on vacation in Dream Harbor trying to... Tr trying to take a break from both his life and his constant desire to always fix things. But somehow fate finds Ben trapped by a blanket of snow in Kira's farm. And despite her grinchiest first impressions with the glow of the fairy lights twinkling in the trees and the promise of a warming hot chocolate, maybe just maybe these two, these two lost souls will have a Christmas they'll remember forever. So that sounds fun. There's also a book I just seen from a booktuber, uh, I don't remember the name, but it was, um, it was a Grinchy, I want to, I want to look for that one. It was a Grinchy type story, um, called, uh, I think it was called My Neighbor Stole Christmas or something. And it was kind of a Grinch-esque type of thing. It looked really fun. Um, I'll pop up the name if I can find the right name, if I can find it. But, uh, that one looked really fun for Christmas too. Uh, but yeah, so this one, and it has a little dog on it. On the, on the front. I'm a sucker for dogs and cats on the covers. And uh, so anyway, so this will be read this Christmas, I hope. Um, yeah, it sounds really fun. But yeah, she she hates Christmas, Kira. So we're going to see if she falls in love with... Um, we're going to see if she'll fall in love with Christmas. It's Christmas time, says Buddy the Elf. Yeah, Christmas. Okay, so now we're on to, these are a Goodwill haul, and we'll kind of try and rush through. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Um, good luck to you. I hope you stick around. Uh, this is a rather, this is a new, this is new. This is like, this looks brand new. This is, I wanted to start reading the Michael Conley Bosch series, and because uh, I found this series on um, um, Prime. Amazon Prime, and I watched a couple episodes and I really liked it. So I thought, oh, I probably would like the book, right? So, um, yeah, so this is the first one in the series. It's Black e the Black Echo, and I just, I happened to come across it at Goodwill, and it's a, it looks like a brand new book. It's in super great shape. Like, not even, the spine's not cracked, um, the pages aren't, I mean, it's, it's just really good, in really good shape. Um, I mean, there's no, uh, it might be a little teeny wear and tear. Somebody marked an X on the thing, but as far as anything else, this is smooth as silk, but this is about, so this is about a homicide detective. Harry Bosch is what the series is about. And so this one, this, this is the first Harry Bosch novel it says winner of the Edgar award and the best first novel. Okay. So this is Michael uh, Conley. Um, yeah. And it says for Maverick LAPD detective, homicide detective, Harry Bosch, the body in the drain pipe at Mulholland, Mulholland Dam is more than another anonymous statistic. This one is personal because the murdered man was a fellow Vietnam tunnel rat who had fought side by side with him in a hellish underground war. But Bosch is about to relive the horror of Nam from a dangerous maze of blind alleys and daring criminal heist be heists beneath the city, his survival instincts will once again be tested to their limit. Pitted against enemies inside his own department and forced to make agonizing choices between justice and vengeance, Bosch goes on the hunt for the killer whose true face will shock him. So yeah, so I love, I'm a sucker for like detective um, characters, novels. I love it. I, I've always loved those. I love as a kid watching the detective um, cop shows on TV. And um, I just, it's just rolled over into reading. And I've always, I just, I've always loved it. So this is something I 
and a homicide detective in gen, uh, you know, more so than just a regular cop show or whatever. It's got to be homicide. Um, anyway, so yeah, so there's that one. And that was a uh, dollar ninety nine, brand new. And another one, this one I heard a lot of, a lot about, there's a movie that came out about it and, um, I, oh, it's a Netflix series. Okay. Maybe that was, that's the, that's the movie. <laughs> it was a Netflix series. Um, and this is Anthony Doerr, 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 All the Light We Cannot See. I've heard a lot of things about this. This is very popular. Uh, I don't know if it was back in the summer or a little bit before that, but it's a Netflix series. And I, I know it's about World War II, I believe. Um, if I'm not wrong. And it's a four-part Netflix series directed by Sean Levy. Okay. Um, of Stranger Things. Okay, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about that. Um, it says, All the Light We Cannot See won the Pulitzer Prize in the American Library Association Alex Award and was a finalist for the National Book Award. Um, it says Marie Laurie lives with her father in Paris near the Museum of Natural History, where he works. When she, when she is twelve, the Nazi occupy Par the Nazis occupy Paris, and father and daughter flee to the walled city of San Malo, where Marie, where Marie Laurie's, that is a tongue twister. Couldn't come up with another name. Um, reclusive great uncle lives in a tall house by the sea with them. They carry what might be the museum's most valuable and dangerous jewel in a mining town in Germany. Warner an orphan grows up with his young, younger sister enchanted by a crude radio enchanted by a crude radio. They find that belongs that brings, I cannot read today. It's like a Monday every day um they find that brings them news and stories from places they have never seen or imagined warner becomes an expert at building and fixing things crucial new instruments and enlists and is enlisted to use his talents to track down the resistance marie Lurie, marie Lurie, that's that's how we're gonna say it and warner from wearing I cannot read. From warring countries come together in St. Malo, that's how I'm going to say it, as Doer illuminates the ways against all odds, people try to be good to one another. If you understood what I just read, congratulations. It's a World War II story. Um, and this father and daughter go to the uh, seaside to stay with an uncle to escape the war. And apparently he takes artifacts with him and, uh, yeah, so that's what that's about. And it's a Netflix four. is this a four part? This is a four part Netflix series. Okay. Anyway, it was interesting to me cause I'm a history, I'm a history person and, um, yeah, you just got me there. Okay, go a little faster, Amy. Um, so this one is, and that one was, um, that was $1.99 too. And this one is $1.99. Most paperbacks I get at Goodwill are $1.99. Um, that one, I forgot. Okay, yeah. So this is, I already read this and I decided, I, I've been reading the series, so I, I thought since I like it, I, sh I should collect the books. Because why not? Um, this is C.J. Box Badlands. It's a Cassie Jewell novel. Um, and this is also on a show on ABC called Big Sky. Um, so the first one I read was called um, Beyond. That was the first one. And this is the uh, um, Cassie Duell, uh Well, the first one... The first one doesn't have, or it does have Cassie, um, but there's another character that has the first one. And then as it gets to the second one, um, this one, it's Cassie Duel. And then um, there is uh, the third one I was going to read. So I have them in here, which I'm not making sense at all. I probably should just 
uh, Cody Hoyt slash Cassie Duel novel. So it starts out with Cody Hoyt in um, Back of Beyond. And then um, there is, um, oh no, wait, is this the third? I don't know. I'm confused. I'm confused. There's Back of Beyond, The Highway. That was the second one. This is the third one. Okay, Badlands. Um, or it's called Paradise Valley. So I don't know why there's two different names. Um, yeah, so this is the third one. And then there is Bitter Roots, which is after this. And I'm not sure how many. There's four or five, maybe. Um, and CJ Box also writes a series, uh, which is uh, a show on... Um, I think it's Paramount. Paramount Streaming is um, Joe Pickett, which I watched that series. I think I watched the first season of that and I liked it. And I do want to read the Joe Pickett's uh, novels, but I want to get through the um, Cassie Duel, uh, the Cassie Duel novels, which is the Big Sky uh, TV show is based on. So this one is about 20 miles across the North Dakota border where this scenery goes from rolling grass prairie to, to pipeline fields. Detective Cassie Duell has been assigned to be the new deputy sheriff of Grimstad, a place people used to be from but were never headed to. Grimstad is now the oil capital of North Dakota. With oil comes money and money comes drugs and with drugs comes the dirtiest criminals, criminals hustling to corner the market. In a small town resides 12-year-old Kyle Westergaard. Even though Kyle has been written off as the slow kid, he has dreams deeper than anyone can imagine. He wants to get out of town, take care of his mother, and give them a better life. While delivering newspapers, he witnesses a car accident and takes a mysterious bundle from the scene. Now in possession of a lot of money and packets of white powder, Kyle wonders if his luck has changed. When the temperature drops to 30 below and a gang war heats up, Cassie realizes that she may be in over her head. As she is propelled onto a collision course with a murderous enemy, she finds that the key to it all might come might come in the most unlikely form an undersized boy on a bike who keeps showing up where he doesn't belong because a boy like kyle is invisible but he sees everything so yeah so this was an episode this story there was an episode on uh big sky uh i don't know what season the second season i think i think they've did three seasons and the last se the last season had reba mcintyre in it which i didn't get to finish that one but uh, i want to go back and finish it um she was really good in that but anyway so yeah so there's back of beyond the highway badlands parrot oh maybe paradise valley is a different one the bitter roots and treasure state um so there's one two three four five six it looks like six in the series and this is the third one so anywho excited about that one and um uh, this one is this is a dollar 99 and this one is i seen this um when i was looking online for something this is called molokai um by alan brennert um so i picked this up because well i went to my i went to the university of hawaii on the big island uh the island of hawaii for my history degree so I am familiar with the Pacific, um, a little bit of the Pacific history. So I've been miss I've been missing Hawaii, um, as most people do, but yeah, my friends there and this, this, everything about the island, the big island, Hilo, shout out to the Hilo Vulcans, uh, the university of Hawaii, um, my alma mater. Uh, anyway, so I've been wanting to read more about Pacific Island, the the Pacific Islands and Pacific Islander uh, authors. And so this is one I found um, that I had came across online, but I found it at the Goodwill and it's a good copy. It's uh, so Molokai, if you don't know um, a little bit of the history, the Molokai was colonized. Um, they colonized, well, aside from the Native Americans, they took, um, there was an outbreak of leprosy and they took, the people that got leprosy and put them on the island of Molokai. And, um, I believe it was the, um, um, uh, Mormon, uh, missionaries that ran it or were there. 
And so we're overseeing that. But anyway, if they came down with leprosy, they took them away. So this is about um, a girl who comes down with leprosy and she's taken away and she's taken to Molokai. Um, so this is, so basically that's Molokai's history has a history of a colony of lepers, not, not, you know, aside from the native Hawaiian, um, peoples that already lived in Hawaii. Okay. Um, it says richly imagined novel set in Hawaii more than a century ago. It is an extraordinary epic of a little known time and place and a deeply moving testament to the resiliency of the human spirit. Rachel Kalama, a spirited seven-year-old Hawaiian girl dreams of visiting far-off lands like her father, a merchant seaman. Then one day, a rose-colored mark appears on her skin, and those dreams are stolen from her. Taken from her home and family, Rachel is sent to... I have trouble pronouncing... Kalapapa. Kalapapa? I, maybe a little off on that. The quarantine leprosy settlement on the island of Molokai. Here, her life is is supposed to end, but instead she discovers it is only just the beginning. With a bri vibrant cast of vivid, vividly realized characters, Molokai is a true-to-life true, true -to -life chronicle of people who embrace life in the face of death. Such, a, such is the warmth, humor, and compassion of this novel that few readers will remain unchanged by Rachel's story. Mostly fiction. Um, anyway, he is... Uh, Alan Brenart, novelist, uh, screenwriter. He lives in California. I, I can't. There's a sticker, so it says something. I think he's from Hawaii. Um, anyway, so yeah. So it's a little girl who comes down with leprosy and was taken away from her family and sent to Molokai to live in this leper colony, which, you know, people, this is a kid figuring they would just die there and condemn them, but this group of people created their own life in their own base, you know, had become bringing their own histories to this, uh, group of people. So that's interesting. Cause I don't know a lot about, I didn't study a lot about the colony on Molokai or, you know, um, in, Ho in Hawaii, but, uh, Hopefully this will be, it's a fiction story, but it's mixed with, you know, these things happened. Um, and here is a uh, map, if you're not familiar, with the uh, Hawaiian Islands. So this is the big island right here. And Hilo is right over here, that little notch. And um, so then if you go forward, there's Maui is the next one. Then you have Molokai uh, Lanai, and then you have, um, you have Oahu and then Kauai in the back. And then, um, I can't pronounce the other one. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get to read it. And then I guess there's, a there's another one called Honolulu by the same writer. Um, not sure if, somehow it's connected or I don't know those reader like reading group questions in the back um yeah so we'll see so we'll see when we get to this but um there's also a thing on uh the island of Hawaii um there's a Merry Monarch Festival, which is a hula festival, and it's it's uh, it's it's world known, and people come from all over the world to visit to go to this uh, hula festival, and it happens every year in um, April, and uh, I went several years in a row when I was there. It's very exciting. It's very fun. It's it's neat to watch if you've never watched any kind of hula competition or anything like that. Um, it's it's fascinating. But anyway, so with that coming in April, I want to read some um, uh, Hawaiian um, novels. And so there's actually a novel that I'll hopefully try to get to read. Hopefully I'll get to read it somehow, either buy it or be able to get it through the library. It's called Hula. And it's about a girl and her um, um, going for the hula competition and her family and the the traditions of the hula 
in the family too. So that sounds really interesting. And that's one I want to read in, um, April. And so probably I might read, uh, that one in April. I'll try to read that one in April. So I might have a whole group of, uh, TBR for April that has to do with, uh, either the Pacific islands, uh, Hawaii islands in general, and maybe, uh, things that have to do with, uh, hula and that type of thing. So anyway, so that's just a little preview. Um, yeah, so this next, this is a group of books. I got this in, uh, it was, it, they were selling it as a collection. And I've been listening to these on audio for about a year now. It's a Tawny Kappas books. And I found these, um, a couple of these stories I found on audio on YouTube. And so I was so, because ex- every time I go to Goodwill, I look for a Tawny Kappas uh, books, um, her Cozy Camper series or the um, holiday, uh, mystery series or whatever. And, um, I never can find any, but then I found this pack. They had them packed. Uh Oh, and these were, I forget how much it was. I want to say it was like three fifty for one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six books, three fifty for these six books. And there's, and they're short books. It's they're cozy mysteries. And so I got, um, these books and it's her, it's her scene of the grind. Uh, it's a coffee cozy mystery series. And so there is scene of the grind scene of the grind. It's the first one. Um, and it has this cute little dog. And so the, when I started listening to it on YouTube, it has this, there's this little, uh, they're short, um, and they're in good shape. They're like brand new. And you can get on Amazon. You can buy these books on Amazon. And I think they even sell them in a box set. So I'm suspecting that somebody had bought the box set and then either read it and didn't want it or who knows. But, um, and it also has recipes that says included in the back. I love it when, um, these cozy mysteries have, um, little recipes or something like that in the back. It's, it's so cool. Um, so there's quite a few, there's recipes from, oh, and so the name of the coffee place in this series is called the bean hive. Um, the bean hive. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just fun. And it says Roxy's favorite breakfast casserole, coffee souffle, Roxanne's blooms, famous chai tea, peanut butter, dog treats, stuffed pepper soup, scones with a flavor, flavor twist. So there's all those recipes in here and, uh, yeah, so it's a cute little cozy mystery and, um, from the bean hive, uh, I love it. And let's see. So that's number one. And then there is, um, let's see. Let's see. This is number two, mocha and murder. See little little doggy. He's on he's on all of them. Um, this says number three. This is freshly ground murder. It's a Christmassy one. So I might read these out of order because get to the Christmas one. And then there is so that's three, and then there is four. It says cold cold blooded brew. Looks like a wedding one. And then there is let's see, this is five. This is decaffeinated scandal. So these are good short little reads, um, but they're fun. They're, oh, it was $3.99 for all of them. And this is number six, The Killer Latte. So I just love, I just, I'm finding I just love any kind of cozy coffee mystery. Um, since I, I read that Fresh Brewed Murder um, last, a couple months ago, last month. And, uh. Yeah, so three ninety nine for all uh, six of those, five of those, six of those, six. Yeah, and so the last two were recipe books I found at um, Goodwill. I found my found my tabs. I thought I lost some tabs. Um, because I started tabbing these <laughs> six places. So I found these really cool. Um, um, I don't know what you call them. Anyway, this is Guy Fieri, uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, The Funky Finds in Flavortown. 
I was like, yeah, I love this show. This is great. I love, I love Guy. Um, I love his diners, drive-ins, and dives. And so it has in here, where's one? Hands Irish Pub. So that it's different places that he's been to that he's put, not everything, obviously. He's went to, and it says, so like there's that one, and it says it's in, um, I'm assuming if these, some of these might not even be there anymore, but this is in um, Atlantic Beach, Florida. And then it gives you a, um, a recipe. So there's Guinness Beef Stew. And it tells you the recipe. And then there's Coolahan Spice Blend RGP Roasted Garlic Pepper. So it gives you the... So if it, you need some kind of a spice or a sauce, a lot of times with this recipe, they'll have a, that that there too, I've noticed. So yeah. So it's just black and white pictures in here of the things. There's no not really any color ones. But um, yeah, just because I like... Um, there's a Smack Shack at the... 1029 bar which is in minneapolis minnesota hmm. and that recipe is roasted leg of lamb sandwich i don't know why did i it, maybe that wasn't the one <laughs> but that's okay this was the one i put it on the recipe and not the place pizzeria lola yeah i think i remember seeing this one on um diners, drive-ins, and dives. So this one I marked because it had a, the pizza dough recipe, which I have a pizza dough recipe, but, um, I, I wanted to try that one out, but this is that. And it has a picture of the people, you know, the people that run the play, own the place. And, um, so yeah, so this is, um, the Food Network star is back with an all-new American book in his number one New York Times bestselling series. Okay, so apparently he has some other ones here. And um, I just have this one. And I got it at Goodwill for $1.99. Yeah, so it's a little recipe book. Find a place to put it. And this one, I thought, well, this is interesting. Now, I've only been to this place one time because um, they don't have one in my area they have it where my sister is which is an hour about an hour um south but this had very colorful pictures i love the the recipe book i don't necessarily like everything in here but this is cooking with all things trader joe's okay so i've been to trader joe's one time i liked it um some things are a bit pricey yes it's the the hype i guess but obviously I've marked some things it has very nice looking pictures. I do. I do like the, um, Island vibes it gives off. Um, the, yeah, this is the, uh, back and, um, so let's see what is, what is something, uh, if, this one is very thick. It's hard to hold with one hand. So let's see. I'm looking for what I marked would be um, spicy tropical shrimp boats. Okay. And then there was, uh, what is this one? Oh, yeah, I just put that. I, I, I roast garlic, but this is roasted garlic, but I'm not going to show you that. I, I roast, I just thought I could get another recipe for roasted garlic because I just do it on my own thing. Um, this is, this is hard to hold with one hand. Um, what is this one? So black bean and ricotta stuffed portobellas. Yeah. Um, this is go, go mango chicken. I'm like, I love mangoes. I named my cat mango. Um, yeah. So these are just a really colorful, nice um, uh, California fish tacos. Yeah. Can't pass that up. Um, so they're all colorful, um, colorful pictures and it's a nice thick book. And, uh, again, got it for $1.99 and on the back, it says it was from quick and easy cooking, I guess, um, 1890, 1895 for new for this book. No, thank you. It's heavy too. It's cut for a smaller looking book. It's heavy. 
So now, so that was Goodwill and my one um, Sam's Club. So here, we are going into the library book sale hall. So I found these two uh, little books. They're called, um, well, one's called a book shot from one's James Patterson's. And he has these little, these little novella shorts that are called book shots. And I've seen them on, I, when I'm looking up his books on the internet. And I didn't necessarily know what they were until I came across a, a one at um, the library book sale. And it says book shots. It's uh, this one's James Patterson with Maxine Hatro. Uh, the, it's a woman's murder club, so that's the books I uh, like to collect from him. Is the Medical Examiner? Okay, so it's just a tiny little book, and it's very short. It's like, and he has book shots in different series too. I've noticed. So there's like the Alex Cross series, and then there's just some other ones. Um, I got another book shot this last uh, weekend. Um, I got found at the library, so I'm hoping to find more of these maybe. But this is uh, 125 pages. Yeah, it's very short. Very short. You can read it in one sitting very easily. Um, and it says, James Patterson Bookshots. It says, you're about to experience a revolution in reading. Bookshots. Bookshots are a whole new kind of book. 100% story-driven, no fluff, always under $5. I don't know. I paid. It It was in my bag. So at the library sale, you get you can buy a bag for $5, and you can stuff as many books in. Some of the books are priced, you know, if they're priced like at the library sale, they have them in different sections if they're more than for the $5 bag books. Um, they're appropriately marked, but anyway, most of them are, you just can, otherwise, if you don't get the $5 bag, you can pay 50 cents a book. I think it was anyway, I got the bag. It's cheaper that way. I think these came out to like 30 cents, all these books, maybe, um, each. So this, I guess you can buy these under $5. It says $4 99, but I think I paid 30 cents from the library sale. So anyway, it says, um, I've written or co-written nearly all the book shots, and they're among my best novels of any length. At 150 pages or fewer, book shots can be read in a night, on a commute, or even on your cell phone during a break at work. Um, James Patterson. So, anywho, so there is, I don't know how many, but he's got a list of his book shots. That many. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested because that's a cute little just, oh, and there's another one well, that's, oh, and then there's Bookshot's Flames. I don't know what that is, but that may be, maybe that's more spicy. Um, I don't know. Um, haven't got to, haven't got that far in figuring that out. Anyway, this is called the Medical Examiner and it says two bodies arrive at the morgue. One was still breathing. A rich a rich woman checks into a hotel room and entertains a man who is not her husband. A shooter blows away the lover and wounds this million, millionaires, leaving her for dead. It is a perfect case for the woman's murder club or just the most twisted. So, yeah. So, that's cool. Um, and so, I found this other little... It's not a book shot because it's not from um, James Patterson. But this is a Karen Slaughter... Um, short story. And I seen this on, um, on the audio on the Libby app. I was going to get it one time and it was like, it was very short. And I thought, is that, is that the whole book? Because it was like, I don't know. It was, it was, it wasn't two hour. It was like an hour, an hour audio. And I'm like, I was, I was kind of like, I'd never heard of it. And then I was like, I don't think that's right. But then when I found this book and it was a short, and then I did look it up that it was a short story. I was like, okay, it could be an hour or I don't even know how long it was on the audio, but it says blonde hair, blue eyes. It's a short story by Karen Slaughter. Um, so that, that's a, a very easy read. That's, uh, just, it's like a hundred, just over a hundred pages. It says Julia Carroll knows that too many stories start that way. Oh, wait. A beautiful young girl was walking down the street when suddenly 
says Julia Carroll knows that too many stories start that way. Beautiful, intelligent, 19-year-old college freshman. She should be careful, but instead she is frightened because girls are disappearing. A fellow student, Beatrice Oliver, is missing. A homeless woman called Mona No Name is missing. Both taken off the street, both gone without a trace. Julia is determined to find out reasons behind their disappearance, and she doesn't want to be next. So, just a little short, blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, so I thought those would be fun. Those are easy, quick read at night. And um, where are we going? Where are we going? So this one, I found an old um, Agatha Christie um, book, Double Sin and Other Stories, it, featuring Hercule Perot and Miss Marble. Um, it's in good shape. It's an older book. It's, um, um, I think it has some multiple stories in here. It is from, okay, I'm trying to see when it was published. I'm going to say it was the 60s. Oh, it says this Dell edition, Berkeley edition. This is a Berkeley edition, so this is not as old. I mean, it's older, 1984 version. And it has, uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know if it's eight stories or eight things in here chapter that says other stories so uh, work yeah there's a few there's a few different it's a few different short stories in here by Agatha Christie so I love Agatha Christie um I was happy to get that one and then let's see, I found a, another Karen Slaughter in my Will Trent series. This was, I'm only on the third um, book right now, but this is a little ways. This is, uh, I don't know what number this is. This is uh, Karen Slaughter's Unseen. It's a continuation of the Will Trent series. And um, that's Karen. And uh, trying to see which. Unseen is, well, I don't know what order this is, but it's like, if I'm on three, this is either, it's not four, so it's five or six, I think, or, because these aren't in order, or maybe they are, I don't know what Brianna Reach was. I read Triptych, I thought the next one was Fractured, and then there's Undone, which I'm reading. So the next one is Broken, and then there's Fallen, Criminal, and Unseen. So I don't know if that's correct order, but anyway, these are thick little books, but this is in good shape. And uh, I love my I love the Will Trent series. And that is also a TV show on ABC. Um, I believe they should be having a third season, but I don't know when it's going to come out. Um, but yeah, so, and this is Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. I read Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. That was my first S.A. Cosby and I loved it. And I ended up getting, uh, I found the hardback at, um, last month or not last month, a couple months ago at Goodwill, um, All the Sinners Bleed, the hardback. And I haven't read that yet, but then, um, I heard the, this one and it was supposed to be really good. And so... Blacktop Wasteland, S.A. Cosby. I, I really enjoy his writing um, so far. In Razorblade Tears, I really, I really love that story. Um, it was good. So I'm hoping for the best with this one. And then the one I have is All the Sinners Bleed. Um, yeah, so this is in good shape. It has a little bit of writing on it, but I don't care. And this was, oh, this is from the library cell. So these are all from the library cell. They don't have, obviously, um, like I said, I think it was about 30 cents. And, yeah, you know, per book, as many as I shoved in my bag. And kind of trying to run through these quicker, not necessarily go through everything. They're mostly thrillers, mystery. I have another, uh, cl uh, like, literary classic. But, yeah, so this is, uh, I had one, Alison Brennan. Uh, I haven't got to you yet, but it sounded interesting. And um, I found... At, in this haul, in the most recent haul, I got two or three more Alison Brennan books. But in this in this haul, I just found, I had just got one at the time, and it was um, Cut and Run. 
it's a so she has different um this is her character uh fbi agent lucy kincaid told you i was a sucker for cop detective uh those type of stories so uh she has a detect uh series that's the fbi detective and so this one has to do with and i guess she has a series that has to do with a investigative reporter um maxine revere so these two characters are combined in the story. They meet or are working on the same um, on the same uh, case somehow. But uh, yeah, so it's a it's a regular size paperback, I would say regular four hundred and something pages. But uh, that's gonna be fun. I hope all my detective cop stuff is fun. Um, and then might as well put this up here. Um, Almost done. Oh, shoots. Hope I didn't. Okay. Sometimes I hit the button and things go blank. Um, and then I found another Christmas one. It's by Joanne Fluke. Um, she does the um, Hannah Swenson um, cookie mystery um, series. And she, there is also on Hallmark, there's a Hallmark mystery series called, um, well, I think it's called still called Hannah Swenson. It's um, a character that Joanne Fluke wrote. And this is the candy cane murder. And she there's also two others. So that's her story in here. But there's also two other authors that have two other stories in this book. So there's three stories in this book. And that is... Um, so this candy cane murder. There is The Dangers of Candy Canes and Candy Canes of Christmas Past. So there's, and I believe they're all mystery, um, they're all, uh, cozy mysteries and, uh, yeah. So I thought I seen that and I thought, yeah, I want to, I want to read that one for this Christmas, Christmas readathon. And this one, so this one, I have a Taylor, this is Taylor Adams. I have a Taylor Adams. I haven't read yet. It was called the last word. Um, and I thought I was going to read it this December, but I'm not sure. I do have it on my 24 for. 24 I believe and I haven't got to it but this is called no exit and I heard about this one and also so when I was um looking on um I don't know if it, it's either Hulu or Disney I think it was Disney um there is a show or movie about this on there and I had no idea so if you haven't heard about this one this is a thriller one and um when I first heard about it, I, th I had tried to get it last year at the library and I didn't get to it. So I had to send it back. So I thought, oh, I'll try to, I'll try again this year. And I didn't get it, but then I found it at the the library sale. So, and it says, um, it says 13 hours, four strangers, one missing child, no exit. She knows, her, she knows her odds. She'll fight anyway. It says on our way to Utah to see your dying mother, college student, Darby Thorne gets caught in a fierce blizzard in the Colorado Rockies. With the roads impassable, she's forced to wait out the storm at a remote highway rest stop with no cell phone reception. Inside are some vending machines, a coffee maker, and four complete strangers, desperate to find a, sig a signal to call home. The exhausted young art student goes back into the storm and makes a horrifying discovery. In the back of the van parked next to her car is a little girl locked in an animal crate. Who is a child? Why has she been taken? And how can Darby save her? There was no way to call for help and no way out. One of her fellow travelers is a kidnapper, but which one? Trapped in an increasingly dangerous situation on the edge of civilization with a child's life and her own on the line. Darby must find a way to break the girl out of the van and escape, but who can she trust? So yeah, so I'd heard about this book before and it sounded really interesting and it's a good wintry tale because it's in a blizzard in Colorado and they're like stuck and then you find this kid in this cage in this car. So apparently there's... I think it's a movie. I don't know if it's a movie or like a, I think it's a movie, but anyway, it's either on Hulu. I think it's Disney, but you could Google it. it should come up. So I want to, I'm not sure if I'll watch that and then read this or read this and then want to watch that. I have no idea, but I want to do both. Um, and then this one, I seen the movie a long time ago. I loved it. I started getting the, I got the first book. And so I decided to get this book. It's called Dan, it's Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. Um, probably everybody's heard about it. 
Um, I love this movie. It was great. It was with Tom Hanks, and um, he did it. He plays uh, the character of Robert Langdon, and um, I think that's his last name. Yeah, but um, I, I, he, he did a great job playing that character. Um, so anyway, so I've always wanted, I've wanted to read the book since I knew that it was a book, but I have Angels and Demons. Yeah, Robert Langdon. And then I want to get the whole series, but I haven't started it yet. But uh, anyway, The Da Vinci Code, if you know, you know, it's a movie. It was a good movie. And this one is another one of my Rizzolian Isles um, um, series that I have by Tess Gertensen. Gert Gertensen? The Mephesto Club? The Mephesto. Mephesto Club. For some reason I can't say that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, Rizzolian Isles, um, the Rizzolian Isles also was a TV show. It's, it's ended. It was seven seasons on, um, is it on TNT originally? Anyway, it's on, um, you can find it on other channels in, um, syndication, I think, cause I've, I found it off on another channel and I started recording the series. I think I have, I think I have all of them recorded on my TV. TiVo TV. Um, but yeah, so I have the surgeon, the apprentice, I think I have the sinner, but, um, this is, there's the body double and vanish. And I think this is the next one after that. So there's a few in between that I don't have, but it's a, it's a detective and a Rizzoli is a detective and Isles is the medical examiner. Anyway, and then I have, this is my classical literary fiction it's thomas hardy far from the maddening crowd i've heard about this i've never attempted to read it um i kind of not sure what it's about i know it has to do with um a farm or something sheep uh but i kind of put it off because i've i thought i've heard that something bad happens to the sheep but i don't know I don't, I don't know. This is an old, um, can't see it. It's a sheep out in the winter. Um, this is a penguin classic. And so I thought, yeah, I should, I should, it's not that big, but it's probably very dense reading just because of the time and the type of writer, uh, has different things in it. Any, anyway, anyway, it's just to have in my collection to, if I ever get around to it. Um, it's about falling in love, I guess. <laughs> Don't know. And this one, this is also a collection of my, um, my Vera series by Anne Cleves. It's another one. I have the Crow Trap is the first one. And this is, uh, The Glass Room by Anne Cleves. It's another Vera Stanhope, uh, mystery series. And, uh, I don't know which one in this. I thought this was. I'm not sure which one this is in the series, but anyway, I don't have it. I have. I had just. I think I just had the one, maybe two, in the series. Um. Yeah, I think this is maybe number. Uh, two, three, maybe four. I don't know. But um, she also has the Shetland series, and these are also on the BB uh a British TV show that I like another cop Vera is a um is a what would you call her DI Vera Stanhope detective inspector um yeah um I really like the lady who plays her on the series um Brenda Brenda Levin I believe is her last name um she's just she's awesome she does I just love her as Vera and, um, yeah, he has a Shetland. He also, she started a new series. I can't think of it. Um, I think the guy's last name is Perez. He's also, they're all, they're all detectives or cops or something, but yeah. So that's another uh -huh. Vera series. And then this one, I seen the movie. This was a, a lot of these I get, they're movies or TV shows and I want to read them because I watched the show and I liked it and I want to read the book. So this one I watched, it's been quite a while ago. Um, 
It's called Lovey, The Lovely Bones Bones by Alice Siebold. The Lovely Bones. I watched this movie. I love this. This movie was great. I it's a it's a thriller mystery. Um, I really enjoyed this movie, and I thought, and then I found out it was a book, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to read the book because the movie was the movie was good. So the book's usually a hundred times better. Um, so this is uh, it's a, it's a I would say it's a you could get emotional yes i would say emotional and make you cry um it's it's not a happy story um it's about a girl who is um says so says my name was salmon like the fish first name susie and then you know right away well you're gonna know right away uh, you know right away in the story that this girl dies she's she's been killed. So it's not a secret. It's not a, that's not the mystery. The mystery is who, who, who did it and where is she? And in the movie, it, you know, it shows and tells. Um, but yeah, so I'll just read you this. So it, there's no, no spoiler because that's, you know, how it starts out. She's, she's dead. So this might, I'll read it again. My name is Salmon, like the fish. First name, Susie. I was 14 when I was murdered on December 6, 1973. So begins the story of Susie Salmon, who is adjusting to her new home in heaven, a place that is not all what she expected. Even as she, she is watching life on earth continue without her, her friends trading rumors about her disappearance, her killer trying to cover his tracks, her grief-stricken family unraveling. Out of the unspeakable tragedy and loss, the lovely bone succeeds miraculously in building a tale filled with hope, humor, suspense, and even joy. But it is sad. Um, yeah, so I can't remember. In the movie, I think you find, you know right away who killed her. And so in the movie, um, I believe uh, the little girl is played by, not a little girl, so she's... I don't know how she was in the movie. Um, Sorsha Ronan. And then the fa the, the girl's father is um, uh, Wahlberg. Uh, Mark Mark Wahlberg. I can't remember who the mom is. And then the... Um, I can't remember if it says... I'm sure it does. Who the killer was right away. Um, ta da 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 I didn't want to say it, but anyway, that's that. It's a, it's a, it's a killer mystery. But the movie was very good. I thought, I thought the movie was very good. Now for our last three books, hardcovers I got at the library. This one, I do, I did start collecting these. Um, this is a Barnes and Noble. Um, bargain book um uh this is Jacqueline Winspears in this grave hour so this is a Maisie Dobbs series that she does and I I read the first I think four or five in the series it's been a while but I absolutely love this series it starts out in the series that the Maisie Dobbs character she is a um a, a private investigator or a uh, private investigator, I think. Yeah. And she had been a nurse in uh, World War One, and the war is over. And so it's like, um, well, this one's this particular one is set in 1939. So this is the coming of, um, I believe. Yeah. World War II, the beginnings of World War II before World War II. But the first one, the first Maisie Dobbs was, it's, it was the setting was after World War I. And so it was Maisie's life as a, she became a, um, a private investigator and, um, it had a lot of dealings with her experience as a nurse in World War I. And then the meeting people that she worked with or, dealt with had to do you know there was a world war one atmosphere of the aftermath of that and um so this it's progressed 
you know, throughout the series. And so this one is at the point where it's 1939 and they're going into World War II. Um, so yeah, I just, I love the, the character. It's a great character. I think it started in, um, the twenties, early twenties, or maybe, I don't know that it was just after World War One, the first one, but this one says, uh, Sunday, September 3rd, 1939, the moment at the moment, at the moment, prime minister, prime minister, never Neville, Neville Chamberlain broadcast to the nation. To the nation, Britain's declaration of war with Germany. You know what's funny? Because last night I was on Prime and I was looking for Amazon Prime, looking for something to watch. And I was, you know, laying in bed trying to go to sleep. And I came across the um, miniseries documentary on World War II. Uh, the whole um, looking at mapping out World War II through all these um, um, movies and clips and things like that. and. I heard the Neville Chamberlain speech that he gave on the radio um, declaring that um, Britain's war with Germany. So that's kind of, that wasn't even, that wasn't even planned. And I just, this, this is the first time I've read this little snippet. So that's really cool that I just, I actually just listened to Neville, Neville Chamberlain's declaration of war speech. Um, anyway. So this is a Maisie Dobbs uh, series, and uh, it's really it's a really good series. It's a it's a it's a mystery. Um, I'd say dabble with it, a mystery. I would say mystery. It's not heavy in uh, graphic or anything like that. It, it's more along the lines. I would say uh, an Agatha Christie type of, but not Agatha Christie. No. Um, and then this one I found. The number 21 in the James Patterson um, Women's Murder Club series, uh, the hardbacks, I, first editions I collect. So this is the 21st birthday by James Patterson. So it's a women's club murder series. It has to do with cops and um, detectives and um, DAs and medical examiners and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, it's... Um, it's just, he's on number 24 right now, I think. And he's had a couple in between, but, uh, yeah. And then this one, the last one is I, this is a, I think it's a trilogy right now. Cause I think there's just three of these. It's uh John Gresham. I also collect the John Gresham hardback first editions. And this is Camino Island. Um, and I think he has Camino wind and Camino ghosts maybe, so, um, I'm not sure what this is about. It's a John Gresham, which if you don't know, John Gresham was a lawyer and he started writing and he writes a lot of his characters have to do with their law characters or about the law or being, you know, getting a lawyer or something, something law. But, um, yeah. Um, so there's Camino Island in Florida. Mm hmm Yeah. So this is, uh, like I said, I think there's two more. I think. Maybe I'm not going to find it in this one because I think this is the first one. So he hadn't written the other one. So there's not, it's not it listed. But there's two more I know of. I think it's Camino Ghosts and Camino Wind. But yeah. So that is my book haul from the library sale and Sam's Club and Goodwill. Boy, look at that back there. That is, that's a lot. I got to find room on my shelves. I got, I got a few books that I'm going to unhaul. I've, I've boxed up that I got to get rid of those and I really got to reorganize my shelves. But, um, that is, that's that. That's the book haul. It's long. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your week. And if you cross your fingers and have high hopes, we'll be back here on Thursday. And I believe Thursday, I'm going to do the book, my book wrap up that I finished in October, the ones I have, which I have about, how many do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six books to wrap up. 
that I finished in October. And uh, yeah, so uh, next month, at the beginning of the month, for the books that I'm collecting this month that I buy, I will have another book haul because I've already went to the library sale and Goodwill and we have another stack. But um, yeah, so have a great day. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for sticking with me if you've went to this unimaginable long video. Uh, okay, but we'll see you here on uh, Thursday. Thanks. Bye.